Hey guys, it's Jeff with I Download Blog. We are talking about Office Mobile for Office 365 subscribers. Woo, that's the full name of the app. I'll just call it Office Mobile just for the sake of time. <laughs> but uh, this is an app that has been, I guess, in the works for quite a while and it's been long awaited, uh, especially for those of you who are looking to use Microsoft Word or Excel or PowerPoint documents on your iPhone. Uh, this is the way to do it. Now, it does require a subscription to Office 365, which you can actually purchase directly through the app. Apple takes their standard cut of the action. Or if you already have you already have a login and you're already subscribing to Office 365, you can just log in with your subscription email address and get started. You can actually get a, uh, I think a 30 day free trial if you go to uh, the Office 365 website. But this is the basic interface here. You have, um, of course, your uh, your documents and your recent tab at the bottom there. You have all your recent documents, anything you've updated. Um, you have your open tab, which allows you to access your SkyDrive or add a place like add SharePoint uh, places if you want to do that. You have your new tab, which allows you to create new documents. Notice the uh, absence of PowerPoint there. Um, and then you have your settings, which allow you to reset office or change your comment username. So that is the basic uh, look and feel of office as far as managing files and everything like that is concerned. Now let's look at a sample document here. Here's the sample that has been provided by Microsoft. A very nice view, as you can see in this sample document, it looks very good. Um, and you know, it's just a pretty sample document, I guess you could say, but the question is, uh, how does editing, how does creating new documents work? And that's what we're going to talk about now. Obviously, if you tap, you get a full screen view uh, to peruse the contents of your document. If you tap in the toolbar, the file options, you can share, you can save as your document. So I can share and it basically just pulls up an email uh, with the document attached in the email, allow you to send it to a contact. And then you also have the save as option, which allows you to save it as a new file and it'll save to your SkyDrive, which is linked to your your login for Office 365. Uh, so that's pretty much the gist of the file options. You also have viewing options. You can choose to uh, do a find within the viewing option. So you just type in your search term here. So I'll just type Ipsum, oops. Actually, didn't really put an L in there. Let's back up, search. And there you go, you see uh, the search, you just hit the little right arrow and you can go through the uh, contents of the document just like that. Now let's look at the outline view. You tap outline, you can just skip around to the various elements on your uh, document here, the various headlines and, or comments and things like that. Um, so that's pretty much all that the view options contain. Now, of course, the big deal here is editing documents and that's what we're gonna talk about right now. Um, it's a little interesting though, typing, the spell check is probably one of the first things you're going to notice with this. It doesn't have any kind of spell check built in. In fact, um, it doesn't even use the, the, it doesn't allow you to use the standard, you know, iOS spell check. So you're just going to have to be really careful. Either, either you're using a Bluetooth keyboard with this thing, or you're going to have to be really careful and visualize your documents, check their, your documents or go online, um, to the desktop version and um, you know check your documents that way do a spell check um, but as you can see here I'm just going to type out a few phrases interesting no autocorrect is enabled oops own <laughs> you see there's no little squiggly lines there to tell you that you made a mistake it doesn't even give you that so this is definitely not the best tool for editing and it's also not the best tool for editing for a few other reasons. I'm going to go into that here in just a, in just a second here. You can see I'm starting to make some mistakes and meticulous when tupping, meaning typing. And you can just see that the, the spell check is non-existent. And even if you tap on the item, it doesn't care. Nothing comes up. Um, a double tap will bring up the ability to leave a comment on that particular item. So I'll just tap comment. It takes a long time to load, as you can see there. It's not quick at all. There's your username that was configurable during the uh, in the settings. You can leave your comment like that. You type tap on the comment again, and then you can view the comment and the user associated with that comment. So that's pretty much it. 
Okay, so what about actually applying edits or applying formats? Uh, you can do that just by highlighting, double tapping, highlighting a particular word, but you can't notice once you're, you've edited that word, you can't skip around to any other sections while the format window is up. It's kind of annoying. Also notice that you only have a few colors to highlight uh, or to uh, you know set the text color to, and then the size, there's no number attributed to the size. It just gets bigger or smaller depending on how many times you hit the plus or minus button. So it's really, really, really uh, high level editing tools here. I mean, not any kind of depth to the editing tools at all. Um, you can, however, select, you know, obviously multiple text by dragging the drag handle and then opening format. And then there you can edit multiple text. But again, you can't tap any other area while the format box is open. So it hinders the ability to make quick formats on the fly. Uh, significantly. Now, once you go back, you can save your changes. Uh, it'll prompt you. You want to tap on save changes. You can give it a name. It'll save it to your SkyDrive. Now, that brings up yet another issue. The fact that you you have to be online really to use this app. Um, it says that there's it will save your documents offline, but I found this to be very finicky at best. Um, I would not trust um, the offline saving functionality. And I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit uh, more in detail a bit later. Now, once you have a document out there, you can tap the little right arrow to email a copy or delete the phone copy. The copy that's on your SkyDrive still stays there, but if you want to delete the phone copy, you can as well. You can actually go into your SkyDrive if you want to. You can view other documents. They don't necessarily have to be Word documents. Um, you'll notice here that I can actually open up that uh, zip file here. Let me go back to documents. If I tap it, it'll say retrieving file. And then you'll see the little share button in the upper right hand corner. I can use any other apps I have installed on my device to open that particular file. So that's just something to keep in mind. It's not a feature you'd probably use much, but something to keep in mind. And OneNote, if you want to use OneNote uh, documents, then you can install Microsoft OneNote for iOS. Now, Let's discuss the offline saving functionality. I put my device in the airplane mode, as you can see there, so it has no connection to the internet. I'm going to try to create a new Word document offline. So I'll just type out testing airplane mode, and uh, that's pretty much it. So I'll tap done, go back. It'll ask me to save my changes per normal, but it's going to say now can't connect to the SkyDrive because you're offline. It'll save it. It'll try to save a local copy on your device. Well, notice there is no local copy. It did not save my local copy at all. It's just not there. So um, yeah, that is a, a significant concern. Now I'll take this opportunity just to show you some of the Excel functionality as well while in offline mode. Uh, and I'll try to save this Excel spreadsheet and show you what happens there. So it's Excel is pretty nice. I mean, you have some basic editing functionalities. You can uh, mess around with a few formula uh, functions there as well. Um, it's still pretty bare bones as far as formatting and as far as editing. And, um, you know, it's just not going to be the full uh, Monty, if you will, um, with the Office 365 mobile version of Excel, just like with Word, your formatting um, and your options are very significantly limited um, with uh, the mobile version of this app. I'm going to try to save changes here. Saving cannot connect to SkyDrive. OK, did it save? Well, no, it did not. You could see the refresh um, updated. It says it was updated at 824. But um, yeah, there's nothing out there at all. And I even closed out the app, reopened the app, still no dice. Now, PowerPoint's a little different from Word and uh, Excel because you can't actually edit PowerPoint or you can't actually create new PowerPoint documents. I'm sorry. You can edit uh, in a very limited fashion PowerPoint documents. You can edit text and things like that. Uh, you can edit the order of slides, but you can't do any real in-depth editing. Like for instance, you couldn't move around that image there, uh, but you can re rearrange the order of the slides if you want to do that. You can edit the text if there's just plain text there, no problem there, but you cannot go in in-depth edits 
uh, edit clip art, stuff like that. And you also can't create new PowerPoint documents with this. You can only edit the PowerPoint documents. You can only create Word and Excel documents. You can edit PowerPoint documents if you want. It is again called Office Mobile for Office 365 subscribers. That is a handful of a name, typical Microsoft there. It's an interesting uh, option uh, for Office 365 users. It's not gonna gain any new subscribers, I don't think. Unless you already have Office 365 on the desktop, you're using it, you want a quick way to access the mobile version, this will be good for you. But I don't see this actually attracting any new users because of its limited functionality thus far. Looking forward to future updates. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. This is Jeff with iDownloadBlog.